So with our case and doors done, we're going to move on to the interior of the cabinet, namely hand plane storage. Up above, we'll build a hand plane till for the longer planes. I'll give you some tips on outfitting it for all the tools you have, maybe even for some tools you don't have. Down below, we've got a cool gallery where you can park hand planes in head first. We've even got room for a couple drawers. Stick around, we'll have some fun. We're bringing some of our most popular woodworking content right here to our YouTube channel, starting with this, Mike Pekovich's Hanging Tool Cabinet Video Workshop Series. If you want to build along, we've got links to the plans below. And if you like this type of in-depth content, head on over to findwoodworking.com and sign up for a free two-week trial of our unlimited membership. You'll get access to over 75 of these long-form video workshop series and honestly, a whole lot more. At the heart of the tool cabinet is the plane till, which is really nothing more than a piece of plywood with a few dividers to separate the hand planes. Supporting the plane till are two triangles screwed to either side of the case. We're going to start by making those over the table saw. I'm going to use a couple stop blocks and my table saw sled to cut out two triangles really quick. If you don't want to go through this trouble, mark a line, take it over to the band saw, cut it out, clamp them together, plane and flush, you'll probably be done before I am. I can get both triangles from a single rectangle. I mark out my layout, align it to the saw curve from my sled, and tack down a couple stop blocks. I make one cut, flip the off cut in place, make the second cut, done. All right, that's a nice fit. Before I screw that in place, we'll go ahead and outfit that with all of its dividers. By the way, everything from here on out is gonna get screwed to the interior of the cabinet. That way it stays modular and it can change as my tool collection grows over the years. I've started by attaching a bottom cleat, which I've beveled to the same angle as the bottom of the till. After that, I'm gonna install one of the end cleats So with my base cleat in and one end cleat, I'm going to use the planes themselves to space the rest of the dividers. All the dividers are installed in the same way. First I put a plane in place, add a little spacer, then the divider, make my marks and screw it in place and move on down the line. I'm not doing any measuring or anything, I'm trying to keep my screw placements consistent, but I'm not worrying too much about it. Feel free to be as exacting as you want on your case. Now some of my planes I want to situate a little bit higher on the ramp. That's because they've got a very steep frog and they would stick out from the plane side if they were low. Just by moving it up on the ramp, it pushes it back in the case and I don't worry about things in the door knocking into it. So I'm going to use up that lower real estate by throwing my shoulder plane down there, a few planes up above it, then I'll continue on with full height dividers. I might just leave this end open for now. I'm not sure what's going to go there, but now I know I've got something to buy. I'm going to use the side cleats to hide the mounting holes. Now I'll attach the till in place and reattach the end cleats. I couldn't help myself. I had to see how they look. It's kind of cool. Now let's start in on the plane gallery. So for the plane gallery, I went back to the mock-up stage. I really wanted to get things figured out. One thing I wanted to make sure of was that I'd have room above the gallery for my number seven. 
In addition, a couple of nice surprises popped up and one not so nice surprise. On the plus side, I discovered that I could divide my partitions horizontally to get a little extra storage for my smaller planes. So that's kind of cool. In addition, I realized I didn't need the entire gallery space for planes, so I outfitted the end of it with a drawer box. I'm going to add a couple drawers in there. Now on the not so nice thing, I wasn't really happy with all the Baltic birch plywood, especially all the exposed end grain. For the top, instead of a piece of plywood, I'm going with a solid piece of beech. And for the bottom and the sides of the drawer box, I'm going with birch plywood, but I've edged it with solid beech for a cleaner look. The dividers, they're going to be Baltic birch. I'm not worried about that. The joinery looks complex, but it's all handled with dados on the table saw. Let's get started. I started by laying out the dados on just one of the boards. I lined the layout mark to the kerf in the sled to make the cut. I also marked the sled on the edge of the board so I can line the second board to that edge for a perfectly aligned dado. By the way, I freshened up my sled with a fresh piece of plywood. This gives me a zero clearance cut, which makes it really easy to line up my marks, as well as giving me a really clean edge. So with the dados done, let's go cut our dividers. So you can save yourself a lot of time on the dividers by ganging them up and also laying out your curve so that your offcut also becomes a workpiece. One cut, I've got six dividers, I'm ready to put them in place. Well, that looks good. Needs a little bit more work though. My drawer box dividers, I cut out a half inch thick stock instead of quarter inch, so I'm gonna have to rabbit the top and bottom to fit in the grooves. In addition to that, I have to groove the sides of some of the dividers in the drawer box to fit my horizontal partitions and the divider between the drawers. I think that's a big improvement. I like the extra effort of adding that beach in there. I think it's really clean. I'm gonna fit for the horizontal dividers right now, hit those on the table saw, then we can glue this up, just a spot of glue to hold everything together, slide her in place. I'm gonna to try to offset those grooves just a little bit on the center divider so I don't weaken it too much by cutting in from each side in the same place. I also cut a groove for the drawer divider. That's gonna be half inch thick, so that'll have to be rabbited to fit the groove. In the center divider with the two grooves, I wish those grooves could have been offset a little bit more, but it feels strong enough. I think it'll be okay. Okay, I've got my dividers in. I want to put a little bit of an angle on there. I don't know if I want to go all the way. I'm at least going to do a nice bevel on the top of this piece. This guy's a little bit tricky because I've got my divider back here and my drawer box side up here. I think I'm going to do something kind of fun. Do sort of a little Batman curve here. I cut to this outside curve here because this is where it runs into the shelf on the bottom. I'm going to handle this bevel on my spindle sander.
I'm using just enough glue just to sort of tack everything in place. I'm not putting all my dividers in because it's really hard to get the top on with all those guys sort of tilting all over the place. I did get my whole drawer box in because that's full length front to back. So I'm using those full length sides to align the top of the gallery to the bottom. Then I just threw on some dividers on the other side just sort of keep everything in place. Now I'll try to uh, slide everything else around and get that in place. And I think once I get everything together, I'm going to put the whole assembly in the case to dry so that I can fine tune the fit for everything and make sure it glues up square. Because right now, actually it's really stable. There's a little bit of wiggle, but I know if I threw some clamps on it, I could rack it pretty easily. Let's see if it fits. All right. I'll eventually screw the gallery down to the case, probably at the back so you'll never see those screws. I don't think it really needs a clamp. It's pretty solid, but I'll go ahead and throw some weight on there anyway. All right, so we've got our plane till, our plane gallery done. In the next episode, we're going to move on to the upper part of the cabinet where we'll add some more storage. In addition, we'll hit the doors with some shelves and swing out panels. While we're at it, we'll knock out a couple dovetail drawers for the gallery too. Stick around.